Welcome back to Just Got Brady on BJPenn.com. I'm your host, Cole Sheldon. Episode 117, we got a good line. I've had a UFC 287. First up, we're going to be joined by Michelle Watterson Gomez to preview her fight against Luana P- uh, Pinajero. Uh, good chat with Michelle, just kind of about her last fight against Amanda Lemos and kind of all that weird thing that happened and taking a bit of time off. It's like, hasn't fought since July, which she said was kind of needed, and she's really looking forward to this one fighting back in front of fans on a big pay-per-view and she really likes this matchup against Luana. She said she's very familiar with her, knows of her quite a bit. And she thinks she has all the tools to really be able to hand her that first UFC loss. She is 2 and 0 coming off that good one over Sam Hughes, but she hasn't fought since November of 2021. So obviously it's been a long layoff for her which makes it that much more intriguing and and kind of really uh, Michelle's kind of really excited to see what she's kind of improved in that time off, but we're then going to be joined by Rob Font and Adrian Rianez to preview their Bantamweight fight. Uh, this fight should be very exciting. It happens right before the burn to Mazda. So I've seen a big spotlight. Uh, Rob knows this fight's huge for his career. If he loses this, he knows his time as a contender probably is over. Lost to Jose Aldo and Marlon Vera by decision, both in back-to-back fights. And that Vera fight is something he's really frustrated about because he knows he was winning basically the entire fight until that final minute in every round. Then he got caught and dropped. And obviously that's what swung the round. But he out, he was outlanding Marlon and he thinks he just some small changes to avoid those power shots can really help him. And he also pointed to the fact that he didn't think he was really fully healed from that broken orbital he suffered against Jose Aldo. Returned just about five months after that. So he thinks uh, that when Vera landed a first punch on him, it really just kind of shook him up and really kind of got into his head at how bad his orbital still was. And, and now after taking a year off, he's really looking forward to this one against Adrian, who uh, Rob actually thinks he can out-wrestle Adrian. He thinks he can submit him. He's going to catch him by surprise with this wrestling. So that was obviously a very intriguing thing Rob said. But Adrian has a ton of confidence. He knows Rob's one of the best boxers in the bandweight division. He knows this fight's not going to be easy. It's a big step up in competition. But Adrian is confident in his hands that he can really just pick apart Rob. And, and really, if he thinks he can, if he knocks him out, like he's automatically right up there in that top five, top ten mix to really start getting big fights. And then we close things out talking to Lupi Godinez to preview her fight against Cynthia Calvillo. This is a intriguing one. Obviously, uh, Lupi hasn't fought since the Angela Hill loss back in August. Very disappointing loss. Lupi making no excuses. Obviously, that fight was supposed to happen a lot a couple of months later, but with Angela being from San Diego, they moved it up on about a week, two weeks notice to so Angela could fight at home. And she just was disappointed with how she fought. She knows she has to mix in her wrestling and striking more. And against Cynthia Calvillo, she knows it's going to be a tough test. Even though Calvillo has lost four in a row, she's been fighting the very best at flyweight. So uh, Loopy knows Cynthia dropping down to 115 can pose some problems, but she's calm. She can get her hand raised and really start moving up those straw weight ranks. But be sure to share the show, subscribe, and tune in next week for another episode of Just Scrap Radio. All right, we're joined by uh, UFC strawweight Michelle Watterson Gomez, who's back in action at 287. Michelle, how's it going? Oh, man, I'm stoked. I'm really excited. Uh, the fight's just around the corner, so we're, we're just trucking along. Uh, obviously, been a bit since your last fight in July, like a bit longer of a layoff than what you thought. Yeah, I I wanted to get in uh, before the end of the year, but, um, you know, it was my last fight on the contract, and uh, I think we were kind of just trying to um, uh, button up some some things before we we move forward, and um, I actually think this is a great fight uh, moving forward, re-signing my contract with the UFC and um, continuing my my journey. Uh, So you did re-sign before this one then? I did. Uh, how exciting is that then? Because probably that relieves a bit of uh, some pressure. It absolutely does. And there's no place in the world I'd rather be than the UFC. Um, you know, when I fought for Invicta, which was an amazing company, uh, I remember watching the, the girls get signed to the 115 division. And um, just me thinking, man, if I had that many eyes on me, how great would that be? Because, you know, when, when you're a fighter, it's not like you train less because you, you fight on smaller circuits. And so I just, I wanted the best, bang, the biggest bang for my buck. I wanted to, to fight a big, against um, the best people in the world. And the UFC is where you do that. And it, it's the same um, case now. Uh, your last fight, like a pretty weird one where no one really knew if you tapped or not, like, how kind of weird was that? Like, what was kind of going through your head when it wasn't kind of stopped right away? You know, it broke my heart. 
uh, I was super excited for that fight. I was doing great. Um, and uh, it just kind of, it's one of those things. That's why people tune in to watch MMA because anything can happen. Uh, she caught me in a really deep guillotine and um, there were, I, I basically tried every every way to get out. I tried stacking her. She pulled my feet from under me. I was trying to hand fight and um, I could start feeling my fingers go numb. My, my lips start to go numb. And um, and I there was just you know I exhausted all my different um, avenues of of exit and there was there was nothing left for me to do but tap and because you know my hands were on the inside it was a you know, like an arm in guillotine it's not something that everybody saw and and <laughs> you know I did have some people tell me you could have kept going because the ref didn't see it happen but. But she knew I tapped. I knew I tapped. And it just wouldn't sit well in my heart, you know, in my fighter spirit to to continue to fight. Uh, and so, you know, I, I, I did the honorable thing and, um, and, and accepted what it was. After that fight, like, did you really know who would be next for you? No, you know, everything was up in the air. It, it um, you know, I... Since I've been signed to the UFC, I fought any, I've only ever fought top 10 girls. Um, I prob Probably outside of Magana, you know. Uh, and so that's kind of just where I've always been. It was a huge fight. You know, every, I, I, I want to say I almost fight every single champion outside of mm. Wei Li. And so all my fights are huge fights. Uh, and, I, and I love it that way because it makes me better as a person, better as a martial artist. But, you know, losing that fight definitely, um, you know, it took me out, it took me out of the rankings. And uh, I think I was left, left sitting to think and ponder for a little while. But the truth is, um, the entire 115 division is stacked. And even outside of the top 10, we got to keep an eye out for all of these girls. Um, I think the, the strawweight division is the most technical and the most powerful um, division as far as the female roster goes in the UFC. So I'm just excited and um, thrilled to still be able to continue my journey there and and, and continue to move forward. Uh, you are ranked 10th. She's obviously ranked 14th, so fighting a bit behind you. But like, how familiar were you with uh, Luana? Just two fights in the UFC, but looked pretty impressive in both of them. Yeah, you know, like I said, you got to kind of keep a pulse on the division because even outside of the top 10, there are girls that are chipping away to get into getting, you know, to take my spot. And so, you know, I actually do know her, uh, um, you know, MMA is a small world. So you got to keep an eye on everybody. Uh, in front of fans, too, on this big pay-per-view, obviously your last fight was in front of fans. And how kind of excited were you when you found out you'd be fighting in front of fans again? That's why we do it. You know, it is kind of like uh, the UFC is like the modern being an MMA fighter is being a modern gladiator, modern day gladiator. Um, and so to be able to pull the energy from the crowd, to be under the lights, uh, to hear the, the crowd cheering, especially on a huge card like the the rematch with uh, um, Sal Bender and Padilla. Uh, I'm super stoked. It's going to be in Miami. It's going to be warm. <laughs> <laughs> I have a great camp, so I'm really excited. Yeah, what is it like for you to be part of this card? Like, you've been a lot on a lot of big cards, but, like, this is probably one of the bigger ones we'll do this year with, like, the, obviously the big title fight, Maz, with all on the card, like, a ton of big names on it. Man, I like, I have a great track record with being on huge cards and performing well. I think um, my, my personality and <clears throat> just my style really um, – feeds into that pressure I, I i like to rise to the occasion um when the pressure's on it really does kind of uh trigger something in my in my mental game to where it's like all right it's go time <laughs> uh obviously holly is fighting like two weeks before you so like how kind of nice is that where you guys are both in camp together it's great you know holly's been she's one of my best friends a mentor, a leader of the gym, and just, um, you know, uh, I, I feel like you learn so much as a fighter, and especially being a fighter for as long as I have, 
and uh, you really kind of get the chance to see what makes a person a person a real champion. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's what Holly is. She's a real champion inside and out of the cage. She, I, I mean, I don't know. Her her out of camp regimen is like most people's in camp regimen she just has the heart of a fighter um she works she loves it she's passionate about it she and you know she talks about that if, if she wasn't passionate about it she wouldn't be doing it but she still has that fire and um you know uh she's token it and i think that it is contagious and to see her, you know, to see her continue to strive for greatness is just, it's nice to be in the presence. And, and I think, I do feel like we feed off of each other um, and we get each other hyped, we get each other excited, you know. Uh, with your fight, Luana's pretty well-rounded. So, like, how do you kind of see it playing out? Um, I, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say she's well-rounded. Uh, I do think that she has great judo um uh, it looks to me that she has good power but um there are some things that i think uh that she's still trying to figure out as a fighter and and i think that i'll be able to capitalize in those instances how much do you think your experience too is just going to play a role or you've been used to fighting all these high level opponents like you've seen a lot of these like kind of the, you fought a lot of the topic how much do you think that will help you in this one Uh oh. Oh, do I got you now? Yeah, it's oh. snowing over here in Albuquerque, so you might have it might have missed connection. Yeah, I, I was just saying, like your experience, like how big of a role do you think that's gonna be in the fight? Because you're used to fighting all these high level girls, like like you mentioned, you fought most of the champions. Like, how much do you think that will help you? Where you've kind of seen and like seen a lot of this stuff in there. Yeah, you know, I think it's gonna help me tenfold. Uh, you know, I'm used to moving around with girls that have speed like Joanna, with girls that have power like Rodriguez, with girls that have the quickness and and the um, the fast twitch uh, like like Lima. You know, so um, and it's it and definitely don't get me wrong, I'm not overlooking her. I know what her strengths are, but I do believe that my style um, really is going to give her a hard time. Do you put any pressure to like get a finish just because it's been a bit for you? It's hard to put pressure on to get a finish. Like it's like you if you force a finish, it it, it um it's kind of like when somebody is, is like always head hunting. It's mm -hmm. just it's not it's not a good um place for your mind to be, or at least not a good place for myself to be. I I'd rather go in there and um be in the moment and let it fly obviously um with the intent to to connect and to be the dominant fighter um you say you go out there and do beat luana like where do you think that does for like what do you think that does in the division because you're a girl that once you get one win like you're always kind of right back and fighting those top girls you know i think i've gotten to a point in my career where i'm just really enjoying being in the moment and and stepping into the octagon and having the chance to do what I love. Um, I really ha haven't looked much further into it. And like I said, I've gotten to a place where, uh, you know, I know who I am, you know, I know what I bring to the table. And um, I already consider myself like at the top echelons of, of, of the division and anything else is just bonus, you know? I know you always like having your family come along too. So is it a bit more enjoyable that it's going to be in Miami and the warm <laughs> weather for them? Yeah, it'll be great. You know, um, uh, I know at first they were thinking about maybe having the fights in New York and I love New York, uh, but a little bit of warm weather uh, can, ne can never hurt. <laughs> so it'll be nice. Uh, I was looking like, it's kind of surprising how long you've been doing this. Like, I think people forget like you're, pro debut in 2007 like 29th fight year like have you kind of thought about how much longer you plan on doing this uh i mean everybody asks me i'm still young i'm still in my prime i'm healthy my style isn't conducive to a lot of concussions and stuff like that uh and i love to fight i swear every time i step into the octagon it it, it allows me to grow and develop as a person and just really find myself it's just 
it's just such an amazing journey how it is and and you know honestly the heartbreaks can can really can really hurt and uh it's hard to get over those things but gosh i've become such a stronger person because of those heartbreaks and and i've just come to realize um that it's just developing me as a person and and gearing me up for for life uh, what is kind of the goal then for you this year like professionally I'd like to be able to try to fight two or three times this year. I, mm -hmm. I know like last year, like I said, we were kind of trying to, we're going back and forth um, on the contract. Uh, and then the year before that I was filming a movie. And so I only got to fight once in these last two years. And I'd like to stay active. Uh, I, I really have found a good pulse on my training regimen and my nutrition and um, what it is to be um to be a fighter uh full time and i'd like to continue to 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 fight a little bit more actively this year uh is the movie out yet i was trying to remember it'll come out this winter uh, what will that be like for you like i'm sure your daughter will watch it to see her mom up on the big screen oh it's gonna be exciting it's gonna it's, it's a great action film um, with an amazing cast, an amazing director. And so I'm just looking forward to seeing uh, some cool action. Is that kind of the plan post-fighting is to get into acting? Or like, could you see yourself doing more movies? Absolutely. I would love to. It, it, it really is a different challenge. It's kind of the other end of the spectrum as far as, um, as, far as fighting goes, right? Because if, especially if I get into... Um, action acting it's uh it's still outside of my comfort zone which is what i would what i thrive in right um doing something that makes that challenges me but um it's choreographed fighting mm -hmm. and in choreographed fighting you have to you have to expose yourself you have to stretch you have to um play to the camera or you have to to act out your emotions and in fighting you do the exact opposite you want to have a poker face you want to do this and that and so i think what excites me the most about acting is uh you know movies is what motivated me to become a fighter because i wanted to be that person because of the story they told because of the fire it lit inside of me um and and so it's kind of cool for it to come full circle and to be able to to say that I've, you know, acted alongside, you know, Tom Hardy and, and have been in these huge movies and uh, I'm just excited. <laughs> uh, just final thing, like for you, what was it like to see John come back and win the heavyweight title like that? I know obviously that's a teammate and good friend of yours. You know, I'm, I'm sure that it's great for him to be in the octagon again. It's kind of one of those things that brings him peace. And so it was good to see him to get that win. And, uh, I, you know, I think he found a new home in the, in the heavyweight division. Uh, well, Michelle, I appreciate the time as always. Thanks so much for doing this. All right. Yep. All right. We're joined by UFC Bantamweight Rob Fawn, who's back in action at UFC 287. Rob, how's it going, man? I'm doing great, bro. How you doing? I'm doing well. Like, obviously, it's been a bit since we saw you, like, basically a year. Like, after that fight against Marlon, like, was this always the plan to kind of take a year off? Um, definitely not. You know, I definitely didn't want to take a year off. Um, you know, uh, my team, my coaches, everybody, uh, we obviously agreed on not uh, waiting a year. Because, you know, obviously, I, I, I didn't go out, but I took some big shots, you know. Um, and also felt like I wasn't fully recovered even from, like, the Aldo fight, like my eye was still kind of like mm -hmm. kind of jacked up. So where he hit me, I want to say it was like a, a left hook and it just felt like my whole face just broke apart. It was, it was, it was like, so I was, I was definitely thinking about that the whole fight. Um, so I definitely needed some time off, uh, but it definitely wasn't the plan. Oh, what do you take away from that Marlon fight? Cause I remember talking to Tyson after the fight, like a couple weeks after, and like, I kind of agree with him and he was saying like, basically you were winning every round until that like final minute and he seemed like Marlon would kind of catch you and like and that's kind of what swung the fight is obviously he dropped you a couple times did all the damage but like you were fighting like very like you won majority of the minutes in there just having to like he would land the bigger shots yeah he um I was winning the fight he, he won the bigger moments you know um 
especially MMA. You know, I think I think if this is boxing, I might have won the fight, the decision. Uh, MMA, you know, damage and and, and those big moments count a lot more than um, than what uh, I think people realize. Uh, you know, obviously, I had to learn that the hard way. Um, my numbers are up. I uh, I was out 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 striking him, but he won he won the small or, or the big moments. And um, you know, the, 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 I believe those definitely swayed the judges. Uh, you more in his favor, and um, yeah, it, it was one of those like I, as far as like what I've learned from that, I you know I just got to stay on point the whole five rounds. I think uh, I don't want to say I let let or lose focus or let or like let off the gas a little bit. I just I just you know there's you know I just got to be laser point. I got to be laser focused on in those type of fights where it's like you know sometimes it's it's more of the punch that I don't throw that that could have saved me. You know um, instead of just constantly trying to almost spam him with a bunch of punches. Um, especially a guy like Vera, you know, he has a real tight guard. He doesn't uh, necessarily throw much, and, and it's kind of like he's just waiting for you to throw to capitalize and, and count, counter that. So, uh, yeah, it was tough, man. It, it was tough because I was winning winning the rounds, and out of nowhere, he was just still it towards, the, towards the last, like, minute, minute and a half. And then after he gets the win, like, what did you kind of think was going to be next? Like, did you think it was going to be a guy like Adrian or, like – because – you were kind of in this weird spot where you're like still a top like five, top six guy, but losing two in a row, like you probably have to fight below you, but then a lot of those guys below you were already getting booked and had fights booked. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I wasn't thinking too much about like who who's next. I know um after that fight we sat down with, with, with the team and and um and we agreed that you know we needed to take a year off. So it was more of like I was more worried about just getting the date not necessarily the opponent and then that, that they threw out threw his name out there um and obviously everybody ahead of me was booked and not too many people behind me as far as like like uh the seventh eighth ninth guy um they weren't available so it was like this is the guy we have um you know i know it's a tough fight uh i've been in his position where they gave me the opportunity to fight a ranked opponent and now it's his turn to get a, a ranked opponent and, um you know i'm just happy happy, happy to oblige uh, was there any ever thought of maybe 45 in your return or was it always going to be 35? Always going to be 35. Um, you know, I, I do believe the, I, I still can make the weight. Um, there were some, some mistakes, um, ahead of the Cheeto fight. Uh, you know, I was, I, I want to say I was totally messing up, but I, I was definitely living a, more of a civilian life than a complete fighter life. You know, I was, I was hanging out a little bit too much as far as like, like, like is eating when I shouldn't be eating. I was on vacation um, when I got the call and it was just like, it, it, just, it just, it was, it just, we, we started too heavy, you know? So, uh, but no, nah, I mean, overall, I always, you know, sometimes we talk about 45. I used to fight at 45 coming up, um, but this fight wasn't, it was never like a serious talk about moving up weight. Uh, with Adrian, like what have you made of his run? Like obviously a ton of, knockout power like very good boxer but obviously hasn't fought kind of the guys that you've been fighting um yeah he, he's he's doing exactly what he needs to do with the with the opponents he's getting um he's exciting he's uh he's has he has some experience too um you know obviously he's coming off the dana white contender series uh i feel like all those guys are on fire right now um you know and and he's again like i said he's doing exactly what he needs to do with some of these opponents he technically hasn't fought um some of the bigger names, but, uh, you know, this is his opportunity. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I think he, I, I like his style. He, he brings it. He's a, he's a fun fight to watch. Um, and I, I believe he's going to, he's going to bring the best out of me. Do you like now that is just a three rounder, like obviously had three straight fights of five rounds or do you kind of wish this fight would have been five rounds? Um, yes and no. Um, I think, uh, I think I know. I know I can go five rounds. Uh, don't necessarily want to go five rounds, even in a five round fight. I don't want to go five rounds. Uh, but um, yeah, and I think um, a three round fight. It's it's more of a, a, a get to the get to the definitely win the first two rounds quick. You know, I'm not quick, but like get get straight to it. You gotta you gotta solidify the first two rounds if, if you don't finish. Um, and you know, we just can't start slow in a three round fight. You know, five round fight, you can kind of start slow and kind of pick it up towards the end. With this type of fight, you can't. And then with like this one, do you think a lot of people are writing you off and overlooking you just after the two losses? Like you are the underdog in this fight. Like it seems like a lot of people are picking Adrian to beat you. Like, do you think people are kind of forgetting how good you are? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's how it is with, with, especially when you're coming off a loss, especially two losses. 
um, you know, uh, MMA world is brutal. They'll, they'll, they'll quickly write you off real fast, uh, which is cool. You know, I'm not worried about that. I'm also not trying to, like, prove anything to any, any of the critics either. Um, they'll be the same guys hitting me up after this fight, asking for mm -hmm. whatever, you know, and, and that's fine, too. That's just part of the game. Uh, obviously, Calvin's dealing with that knee injury, so I, I don't imagine he's training too much. Like, who are kind of the main guys you're working with? Um, so obviously we have uh, my, my boy John Duma. We've been sparring a lot with him as far as uh, as far as sparring. We had a couple of boxers that we've been sparring as well. Um, we, we flew out Angel Pacheco from Minnesota. We've been getting a lot of work with him as well. And then uh, just the, the regular guys, Nick, Tom. Uh, we got a, a bunch of obviously local guys still coming in helping me out with jiu-jitsu and, and uh, wrestling. But uh, they still got the solid solid squad. Calvin's still in the gym. He's still uh, obviously helping me out with little tips here and there, what he can see, what he what he sees, and, 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 and what he would do there. Um, it just sucks that I can't physically move around with him. Uh, fighting in front of a crowd, too. Like, how exciting is that? Like, what, last four or five for you have been at the Apex? Uh, I think the last time I fought in front of a crowd was uh, – Would have been in Recky? Um, yeah. Yeah. See, um, so yeah, it's been a, it's, it's been a while, man. I'm excited. Obviously, like the last two, like there's like a smaller crowd at the Apex, but not like you know, not, not like an arena. So I'm excited. I finally get to get back in, in front of a crowd, uh, feel that energy. Um, it's in Miami on a big, huge card, uh, pay per view card. Uh, so the weather's gonna be nice. And I'm in Massachusetts, so I, I'm dying to get out there. I can't wait. And uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be a great night. Yeah, and you're obviously in a good spot, like right before Burns, Maz, and all in the title fight on the card. So, like, what's it like for you to be a part of this card and kind of be on that like big spot where everyone's already going to be in the arena, everyone's going to be watching the pay per view at that point? Like, it obviously is a big spot for you guys. Yeah, this is huge, man. This is going to be a, a fun night. This is a great opportunity for both of us. Um, and it, it almost feels like a main event with this type of type of spotlight, you know. Uh, how much pressure, if any at all, is on you in this one? Like just coming off the year, like losing two in a row, fighting a guy below you in the rankings, or is there any pressure? Um, the, you know, there is pressure. You know, obviously, um, you know, I, I don't want to go three in a row. Um, definitely don't want to lose my spot in the ranking. Um, and this guy is a killer, so it's kind of like there is a little bit of pressure. But I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm handled it well. You know, I, I'm not overlooking him, but I'm also not you know, freaking myself out, worrying about what ifs and, and if I don't win, what happens then. Like, uh, I'm mentally there, uh, physically there. Um, I just got to go out there and perform. Uh, with Adrian, like, he obviously is a boxer. Do you – so do you just imagine this to stay standing or do you think it's going to hit the mat at some point? I, I, I want to hit the mat. I want to hit yeah. the mat. I want to um, I want to mix it up a little bit more. I want to uh, obviously not just sit there and bang with him and, and throw punches. I want to mix in a lot more elbows, a lot more knees and, and takedowns when, when they present themselves. Um, you know, I, I definitely I, I'm, I want to submit him on uh, this fight. I want to get get him down and get him out of there um, if, if, if it's there. You know, if not, I'm going to I'm going to be smart, pick him apart and look for the finish standing as well. Uh, like you kind of mentioned earlier about how you don't think your eye was really fully healthy in that Vera fight, like taking the year off, like obviously you never want to get hit, but you obviously are going to be punched in a fight, but like how much better do you think you are going to take these shots now that you're fully healthy? I feel good. I feel good. You know, I, I cause in the Aldo fight, I fractured my, uh, my orbital mm -hmm. and it felt fine until it got cracked, you know? So, uh, but I, I think I'm good now. Like, like I feel like my, even when I'm sparring, there's no, like, there's no, like, I don't feel it. I'm not thinking about it. Um, you know, and, uh, but we'll find out, you know, we'll find out. So, but I feel good. hundred percent healthy. A lot of time off, and uh, I'm re-energized, refocused, and ready to go. Uh, you mentioned there, like wrestling and trying to get down to the mat. Like, do you think people forget kind of how good of a wrestler you are because of your last couple of fights? You just primarily been striking. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to say people forget. I, I definitely don't show it enough. I definitely don't go for it enough. I don't, like even when I do take him down, I kind of just do it just to kind of slow it down. I let him up. Uh, but this one, I, I kind of want to like, I, I like slow it down and, and keep them there, you know, and, and, and look for those submissions, look for like TKO and, uh, and, um, and, but not force it. I also don't want to force it and sit there and just kind of drag it out make it a boring fight. I want to, if it's there, I'm going to take advantage of it. If it's not, you know, I'll go back to the old school boxing style. Uh, throughout your career, especially USD career, like you faced a ton of adversity in fights. We kind of haven't seen Adrian deal with that yet. Like he's kind of been winning like every second of his fight. So like, how do you think he's going to fare where, say you get a hold of him or get his back where he's kind of never been in that position before in the UFC. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say that. I'd say like he, he first, he faced a little adversity when he fought uh, Randy Costa. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
you know, he and I, and you can see it. You can see in that fight. And I, I was I was really impressed with Adrian how he, how he he was kind of down. He was kind of losing, and out of nowhere, you just seen him kind of switch switch it up, switch the tempo, switch switch everything up, and he just takes over. So uh, he was down. It wasn't like crazy. It wasn't like he he got his back taken or he got mounted or he got rocked or anything like that. But he was technically losing on the points, and out of nowhere, he just pulled it out. Comes out the second round and finishes him. So, um, uh, but yeah, I definitely want to put him in those type of positions, get him into those spots. Uh, even even if it's standing, like out, out pointing him there or, or hitting him with big shots, and uh, you know, like make him uncomfortable the whole time we're in there. Uh, say you go out there and do finish Adrian. Like I know he obviously is ranked below you, but like, what do you think that does for you in the division? Because obviously it is a pretty big win. Because a lot of people are pretty high on him. Yeah, um, I, I'm thinking, you know, obviously, you know, like, you know, a, a win over him, a finish over him, um, just, I guess, reminds the haters and in, in, in the local, or not the local, but like the the people that like counted me out. Um, and then I think I need one more. Uh, you know, being a guy like that, I can't call for the next guy in line or, or the guy ahead of me. I think I could, I can get a loser of like the say like Cheeto or San Hagen fight or even like the like a Peter Young that just came off a lot. I think that probably make more sense as far as the ranking. Uh, I definitely don't want to fight back again, but you know like whatever the UFC wants, we will go with as well. Uh, bantamweight division right now, like a lot of obviously happened since you last fought. Like we have Cejudo coming back, like O'Malley appears to be next in line. Like a uh, week before you is obviously. Cheeto and Sandy and like what are your kind of thoughts on the top of the division because you're kind of with a win like you're right in the mix with all those guys yeah um you know obviously my job is to get out there get my hand raised and, and get my name back into that conversation um obviously I think the division's on fire um uh, O'Malley's killing it he's doing his thing um I can't wait for that Cheeto and, and Sandy and fight I think it's going to be a, a great fight a big main event it's going to be fun to watch um and then obviously you got the champ fighting Cejudo uh Marab is looked amazing in his last fight, the pressure, the takedown. So, uh, yeah, they're all tough fights. They're all, they're all, um, fun fights. Um, yeah, I see my, my job is to get my hand raised April 8th. But, uh, once I do, I, 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 I want to throw my, my, my hat back into that, uh, conversation. Uh, were you surprised they gave the title shot to Cejudo? Cause I always thought after O'Malley beat Yawn, like he is probably the biggest name in the division. Like I thought that would be the time to give him a title shot. Cause I feel like you can't really risk him losing especially coming off that win over yawn yeah um no i think i think this makes sense i think uh henry henry kind of brings something different to the division um and this also gives o'malley a lot more time just to to prep get ready mm -hmm. he's in a good spot he doesn't have to rush um he can sit back and I, if you had to say especially the champ even even henry they're going to grapple you know uh so i think he has enough time to kind of prep for that and mm -hmm. um and then and then uh see what happens you know Regardless, he's in a good spot. He doesn't have to rush it. He's um he has time to get better and, and improve. So um, I, yeah, I, I think um you know see you see know what they're doing. I think um you know Henry coming back and kind of getting straight to the title shot is it's it's more of a you know it's more of a, a how do I say like it, it just shows how how much you know how much how or how well Henry promotes himself. Mm -hmm. Um you know how you know in it. it I think, you know, especially not losing losing the title and retiring the way he did, it kind of like kind of puts him back into that conversation. So, um, you know, I, I, when he came back, it wasn't like I was like, oh, this is messed up. And UFC is acting out like it's, it is what it is. Um, um, I think it's going to be fun. Um, I'm excited for that press conference. I know they're going to be going at it the whole time. So, uh, yeah. And then again, as far as O'Malley gives him time and then everybody else, everybody else is booked. So it, it's like it's not like he's clogging up the division, you know. I also wouldn't be surprised if O'Malley does take another fight if Vera beats Sandhagen to try to just get that one back before he fights for a belt, or he could just wait. But then uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about is obviously Sterling and Marab. Like, Marab's right there. Marab's kind of said he's not fighting. You and Kelvin are pretty close. I know it's different divisions, but, like, do you understand where they're coming from? Or if you were in that spot, like, would you fight your friend for the belt? Yeah, I, I understand it. I get it. It's um when you when you're, like, and I'm assuming they're close the way me and Calvin are close. Like it's, it's hard to, it's even hard to spar hard with Calvin, you know, it's like to really punch him in the face. is kind of like, it's pretty hard. So imagine like fighting him. So I get it being in that position, man, I think obviously we would have the conversation, uh, but especially like so close number, 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 who is he ranked number two or one? He's number two. I think right he's now. one. He passed O'Malley. 
Yeah, so number one, so that that's tough. So they're really having like that conversation. Um, I can see how they won't fight. Um, they already said it, but you never know. You know, like like they start talking, they get behind, you know, get down to talking numbers, and you, you never know they might fight. But I can see how it could be hard for them to kind of like just jump at it. Uh, just final thing is, what is kind of the goal then for you this year? Like, obviously, a lot of bandwidth fights we talked about, like they're kind of happening all around the same time. So timing wise, for all you guys, kind of. Set you up to have some big fights. Yeah, I think um again get my hand raised um April eighth and then I I think I'm in a position to pick up one of the losers, uh not like losers but like one of the guys yeah. that is their fight um coming up so it could be uh you know the winner or sorry the loser of the Corey Cheeto fight um it could be um uh, who else is out there you know it could be you know now with Henry I'm thinking. Obviously, a Peter Young fight could be could be uh, potential as well, and um, you know, you even got Cruz out there as well. So there is matchups that like they let they excite that are big names. Um, but you know, I'm so focused on like you know not losing three in a row and getting my hand raised. So we'll get to there when, when uh, after, after uh, April eighth. Uh, well, Rob, I appreciate the time as always. Thank you so much for doing this again. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on. All right, we're joined by UFC bandwidth Adrian Yanez, who's got that big fight against Rob Font coming up. Adrian, how's it going, man? Man, it's going great. I'm super excited. Man, yeah, it's it's a, it's a really big fight, and I'm really, really excited. Uh, obviously, we talked when this was announced, didn't know location, didn't know anything. You find out Miami pay-per-view, like, how excited are you for that? Man, I was super excited. Uh, I was like, initially, whenever the contract first got signed, I was really bummed out that it wouldn't, that it wasn't uh, uh, UC San Antonio because I wanted to fight in San Antonio. I wanted to fight in Texas again. But whenever I got the news that it was a uh, 287 and then in Miami, man, that, that, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm 100% cool with that, especially with, with uh, how big of, big of a card this is. Man, I'm, it just, just pumped me up so much more. Uh, like, because I was really bummed out about UFC San Antonio, but the fact that it's on, uh, I'm getting a main card slot on a really, really big card. That that to me is just itself is just like so fucking cool. I'm really excited. <laughs> yeah, and you guys are in kind of that perfect spot, like right before Burns and Maz at all, and before the title fight. So everyone will be in the arena at that point. Like everyone will already have the pay per view by that point. So like. How kind of excited are you to be on this card with like Adesanya, Maz, and all like all those big names, and then kind of be in the spot where you guys are? Man, it's a. I, I feel like it's supposed to be there. I feel like it's supposed to be there. You know, you got a guy like Rob Font, who's a straight banger, straight killer. Like he doesn't he doesn't care how many times you hit him. He just he's gonna keep coming forward, keep throwing volume your way. And uh, and for myself, I. I love going for the finish. I love if you let me hit you, I'm gonna hit you as many times as I can, you know, and I'm gonna try to finish you every single time. So both of us stand up fighters is is just made for for a main card spot, just like the just just in the exact spot it is, right? It's the warm up right before your your co main main event, you know. And I, I I'm really excited. I'm really show really excited to show off my skills, really ex- really excited to go out there and you know put up a fight of the night, man, performance of the night my end hopefully uh my end you know fight of the night you know me get the nod you know so uh but yeah now yeah, I'm, I'm really excited because man it's just it's, this that's this is the fight this is this is the fight for me to go out there and showcase everything and i'm really fucking excited i'm gonna try to get a picture with moz at all because everyone kind of jokes that you're just like <laughs> the family moz at all yeah man I, i'm definitely gonna have to get a picture with moz off 100 percent, man he's actually dm me a couple times you know saying some good saying some good things and i i'm, I'm really appreciative of, of of that man uh yeah uh they say i look like the young moz before he, before you know he got the long hair with the with the full beard you know the little young moz so you know hey I'm, I'm here i'm here for it you know our fighting styles are very similar uh he was a he was an inspiration to me uh you know in the way i fight you know too so uh i'm really excited but yeah it's still cool and I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to get a picture of him i know when we talked like you mentioned how you weren't really sure if rob was gonna take this fight now that it is ha- like I mean, i'm finally here like are looking back like are you still surprised that he took this fight and you are getting someone ranked this highly or now like does it all kind of make sense this is who you kind of thought you'd be fighting uh, for me, it, it's always made sense. I just never knew if it had made sense for Rob. Uh, I I guess I can kind of say yes, but no, because uh, I I figured that he's in that position, you know, where he could like 
call for like, hey, you know, give me someone like Dominic Cruz. Give me somebody like uh, I, I would have thought somebody like Frank Yeager would have been on his radar, you know, like for the last for like Frankie's last fight because he'd fight someone like Rob. And Rob has been like a mainstay in the UFC for a very long time, you know, so it's just I. Yeah, so I would have thought he would have fought one of those guys. You know, he already fought like the Jose Aldo, and then he uh, fought Cheeto. Ver- he also fought like a tough guy in Cheeto Vera. So I don't know. I, I would have felt like he would have fought somebody around around him instead of fighting a guy who was like, I think at the time I was 13, and somehow now I'm 12. It's weird. Rankings are weird. But yeah, uh, it's a. Uh, yeah. I just, I just, I just don't know. Maybe he liked the style, the style, the style matchup. But for me, I was just like, I, I feel like you fit into my style very, very perfectly. And uh, for me, it's a, it's a perfect, it's a perfect matchup for me. And uh, I would have thought that Rob would have wanted like a, like a, a, a bigger name. Cause I don't, I, I feel like I'm still trying to, I feel like I'm still trying to make my name and mm-hmm. he is on the, he's on the road to, to, uh, to i guess uh legacy legacy type fights legacy type fights because he is i think he's like 36 or something like that he's like he's at the tail he's getting close to the tail end of his career you know so uh he really needs to come out and you know fight fight with his back on the wall you know because uh if he loses to me that's three straight losses in a row so he has to come out he has to fight so uh i don't know if this fight definitely made sense for him in that sense. But yeah, no, for me, it made a hundred percent sense. Uh, with Rob, like obviously he has lost two in a row, but you look at the guys he lost to and Aldo and Cheeto Vera, like, and even that Cheeto fight, like Rob was kind of winning the first like four minutes of every round and then just kind of got caught. And that was why he lost the fight was like, he won like more oh, minutes yeah. of the fight. It was just Cheeto kind of had the bigger moment. So like, what do you kind of make of those past two fights? Cause like, even though he's on two fight losing streak, like he was beating Cheeto other than uh, other than when he got caught. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I I take I took I took very close looks at that, and I was seeing what was working for Cheeto, what wasn't working for Cheeto, or what was working for Rob, what wasn't working for Rob. And like I was looking, at, I'm like we're consistently breaking it down and studying, and trying to see what's going on. And he's still in it. He's not like everybody wants to sit here and be like he got absolutely dominated. Yeah, for that last minute where he almost get finished. Yeah. He got dominated in that sense, but he was throwing up numbers. He was landing a lot. He was landing at a really good percentage. So he's not he's not not the guy right now. He's he's not the guy who's on the two fight losing streak where he's just like consistently getting like pummeled. Mm-hmm. It's uh it's like again, like you said, he's winning the four minutes, but then losing that he's losing big time in that one minute. So it's not like he's getting blown out the waters. Yeah, he's he gets uh he gets hurt, but man, uh someone gets kicked in the face of course you're gonna get hurt you know so uh so yeah like yeah he's he's not he's not one of those guys who's just on the losing skid of like utterly being dominated you know i I don't want to sit here and say names but you know the fighters who are on losing streaks but they're really on losing streaks Mm -hmm. you know uh i don't see him as one of those i feel like uh in if he if those punches didn't land on you if those punches didn't land for chill he could have won he he could have been on the winning side uh if if uh you know jose aldo wasn't jose aldo you know he would have won that fight too you know so and then when i talked to him he kind of mentioned how he thought maybe he might have came back a bit too early after that like because he broke his orbital or something in the aldo <laughs> fight he said he was clear and then kind of that first big punch kind of re-shattered it all then he obviously took a year off and not fighting five rounds anymore. Like, are you expecting a different Rob then just with a year off and not, and now only going three rounds? Uh, I feel like he's going to try to push a pace for sure. Uh, I feel like he's going to try to push a pace, but he may or may not want to fight me in a, in a sense of like a war type type battle. He's an, like, if, if he knows anything about me and sees, and sees my fights he knows that there's going to be consequences every single time you take a step in uh i'm going to be going out there and trying to put your take your head off so uh with him having to take the year off you know there's to me i feel like there there will be a little bit of ring rust in there and then also at the same time he did take a lot of damage in those fights which he did have to take his time to recover from those but at the same time you know what a lot of people whenever they take a uh, took a lot of damage you know it's it's kind of hard to come back from at, at a lot of times but uh, i'm not looking at it that way but i am gonna bring that into reality whenever uh, i am gonna 
you know, look at that as, as, as something to take into account because man, a lot of people who took a lot of damage during their careers, you know, they end up, uh, towards the tail end, you know, this starts getting, uh, you know, it starts getting a little bit wobbly for a lot of these guys, you know, like Frankie Edgar, <laughs> Frankie Edgar, you know, he had a lot of wars coming up and then towards the end of the career, you know, he just wasn't able to take the shot like how he used to, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, so yeah, same, same concept, but, uh, Rob is taking the time, is taking the time off, is taking the time to get healthy. And he is being really, really smart about it. So uh, he is smart and like MMA wise, like MMA IQ, MMA, like, uh, like studying and breaking down fighters. He is very, very smart in that. Uh, uh, but in the other sense on my end, I'm just like, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be fun to see, to figure him out which way he's going to yeah. come out. Is he going to come out? very aggressive or is he going to take the back foot and try to you know uh try to stick behind a jab or is he going to try to maybe press forward and press on the wrestling a little bit uh like yeah like i'm excited to see what differences he's made uh because he really didn't shoot in that cheeto fight you know only whenever he, he had gotten hurt uh and in that auto fight you know he gets hurt uh, he gets hurt, and then Aldo's just on top, just kind of just laying and praying. And then that Cody Garbrandt fight, you know, Cody was the one that was trying to push the wrestling, and then he ends up getting reversed. There's just a lot of things going on for, for Rob during those three fights, and just kind of, kind of looking. I want to see the approach that he takes because I'm ready for all. I'm ready for any approach that he brings, you know, because I've been preparing for it. But I'm just really excited to see what style he's going to try to come into this fight especially with the year off especially with all the damage that he's, that he's taken over the years and uh for me i'm just like i want to figure that out uh, do you think because he's like lost two in a row especially you never want to lose three in a row like i don't mm -hmm. think even if he lost you i don't think he'd be getting caught just because he's only lost to like top guys but do you think there is a scenario where he might just try to play it safe and just come up with a very wrestling heavy game plan and not try to stand with you or do you not think like that really is his style because he is more a striker I feel I feel once he realizes that he can't, he will revert back to what he usually does. Uh, you know, he it, it, honestly, I don't think he I don't think he has that in him. I don't think he I don't think he has that like, you know, I'm just going to wrestle this guy for the whole entire time. I don't think he has that in him just because he looks like like, man, you pop him with the jab. He's coming back with you at three or four. You know, he has that fighter mentality. He has that like I want to fight. You know, he, I don't think he has that he has it in them to just like wrestle because you know, at the end of the day, like if, if we're just hemmed up on the fence, the whole entire fight, you know, it's boring. I think at the end of the day, we're both going to be disappointed. And I feel like he, he would like, I know for myself, if I took that approach and just try to put someone on the fence and just try to wrestle in the whole entire fight and nothing really happens. I know for myself, I'm, I am just like, honestly, there's, there's fights where I've had, there were, they were kind of slow and I just felt disgusted with myself, you know? And I'm just like, ah, you know, like I even felt disgusted in with myself, even though it was a fight of the night with Davy Grant. You know, I felt like, ah, you know, there's some. I felt like there were some slow points. I didn't hit him as much and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, like, you know, I did. I could have done more, but like taking that approach that Rob, if he were just try to try to wrestle, try to take me down the whole entire time and not really do any damage, not doing anything like that. I know for myself, I'd be, I'd be very, like, really, really disappointed mm -hmm. I, on my end. And for him, if he didn't, if he I just say he lost. If he lost that way, I think he'd be really disappointed too. So even in, even in a win, like I don't, I don't think he'd be happy with a win like that either. So, uh, yeah, but I don't think he has that in him. If I'm being honest with you, I think he he's a, he's a true uh, he's a fighter. He, he's definitely a fighter, and he's like, I, yeah, best way to explain it, he's a fighter. Yeah, and it's a totally different kind of cardio set, mm -hmm. like going with the wrestling heavy. But like with Rob, like. Even though Vera and Aldo landed good shots, like he was able to go all five rounds with them. Like he has incredible durability. Like only has only ever been finished uh, by sub once by Pedro Munez, like early in his UFC career. So like, mm -hmm. how do you kind of see it playing out? Because this is a guy that is pretty durable. More t like more times than not, he gets that final bell even if he loses. 
Yeah, the, he's he's uh man, uh, it it always sounds like super disrespectful whenever I say it, but it's like it's like the guy is like a like he's a cockroach, man. The dude just doesn't die, man. He's just like he's not gonna stop coming up, like man. He's he's not gonna stop coming. He's just one of those guys. You step on him, he gets back up, and he's gonna keep walking around, prancing around, and all that stuff, you know. So, uh, yeah, he got rocked in those cheetah verifies but he's still putting up numbers he's still going out there trying to reach that final bell you know but uh for me man it's 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 just me just putting in work and also at the same time he is smart he does not the it's not he's not uh like he might be putting up numbers but most of those numbers like are like uh they're not the heaviest strikes you know if he was throwing like bombs for five rounds every single time like just nothing but uppercuts overhands left hooks just you know uh if that was the case where he was just throwing like uppercuts left hooks for like five rounds straight and he got up to like 700 i'd be like i'd be looking at that a lot differently but uh there's the variety in his striking there's like it's some of them are soft some of them are hard some of them like he there's diversity in the striking whenever it comes just to playing off the tempo playing off of like certain things some shots are hard some shots are not some shots are that he's using the setup for another big shot so uh you know he is smart he is smart in that sense and that's kind of adds up to his numbers but it still doesn't it still doesn't like me saying that he has like his cardio is is his cardio is really fucking up there so uh he's he's tough and then also he, again he's durable and he just has that never die attitude so i think that's also one thing that plays in he could be out of shape but he could still reach all five rounds if he wanted to because he just has that never quit never he's either the do or die guy and he's gonna he's gonna do he's gonna do as much until he dies you know so that's i gotta respect that so for me you know i just gotta go out there and touch him as much as i can you know that's that's my game plan touch him as much as i can <laughs> Do you, like, do you just have to kind of like mentally prepare for it to go the distance and like can't get frustrated if he's still there in the second and third round, just guys of kind of what history has shown? Like, I to me, it's similar to that Davy Grant fight who Davy's like very durable. And like after that first round, I feel like you kind of realize you're like, all right, he's gonna be here for a bit then. Yeah, and that's a, that's the exact approach I had to take. Like with Davy Grant, I hit him with like two two hard shots, you know, I hit that right hand. And then I threw uh, another right hand, like a, like two good right hands that I threw, and I like I threw them with intent. And I remember him just shaking it off, and I was like, "All right, well, this didn't knock him out. I have to change up my strategy and what I do. I will have to play that, you know, touch, play behind the jab, move around a little bit more. I uh, did have to play a different game because you know he could take the shots, you know, and uh, you know if 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 Font could take the shots, you know, the game is gonna, about to be played a, a lot differently you know like i i i'm at that point where i can change i can change my uh my tempo at any moment you know i'm ready to change the game plan as well too so uh but yeah you know i'm i'm gonna go in there and try to look to knock him out but if he gets back up you know i'm not gonna rush anything i'm gonna, i'm and i feel like that's what happened and within within a lot of those fights a lot of those guys they jump in way too fast because they get they get font hurt and they're like oh shit this is my chance this is my chance a lot of those guys you know rush it but if you just stay patient i feel like I, i'd be able to get them out there that's all i gotta do is just you know be a be technic be technically sound and patient and it's gonna come uh, are you surprised you're the betting favorite in this one Oh, I haven't looked at the the betting odds or anything like that. I've been staying away from that because I, I as much as as much as uh as much as like I feel like I'm I'm gonna win this fight. I know that Rob Font he's a fucking dog and he's just like I feel like a lot of people have been, I guess, uh, kind of you know saying that he's on his way out. But I don't look at it like that because, man, he's he's a fucking he's he's a fucking animal. He goes out there and his UFC run like speaks for itself and, uh. I'm not really looking at those lines, not really looking at anything like that, because obviously now I can't even bet myself. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, for me, there's, there's there's no point, you know. Uh, I I just want to go out there and just get the win. I'm focused on on the Rob, or whatever other people think, and they can think what they think. But you know, I know what I have in front of me, and Rob Font is 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 a motherfucker, and I can't 
I can't let any outside source kind of hinder me like, oh, I'm going to walk through this guy. No, I, I have to stay technically sound and I have to make sure that I treat this guy as serious as possible. I can't I can't be on an off day being like, you know, even, even, like look at the lines you're like, oh, everybody thinks I'm going to win anyway. So I might as well just take this day off. No, I'm not doing that. Like I'm staying consistently i'm staying consistent staying you know training at, at the at the optimum level i can and gonna go out there and push the pace and i'm gonna go out there and try to knock him out uh say you do like is there any pressure to finish him because like say you become the first guy to knock him out like i think that sends a big statement to the division and that's a lot different than just beating him like beating him you become top 10 you probably take a spot at six anyways but like if you go out there and knock him out like then you're automatically like in a conversation of maybe he's one win away from a title shot now. Yeah, that that's that's my goal every single time I step in the cages. I want to get a finish anyways, you know. And if I finish someone like Rob Font, that definitely skyrockets me to the top, to the top of the division easily, because uh, nobody else has been able to do that. Uh, some people have been able to submit them, but those have been like really good grapplers, and you know that was basically off of when they have rocked them and all that stuff. But if I go out there and I finish them and I start them that just does wonders for my career and also at the same time for me that's just the way i fight too i like going out there trying to take people's heads off anyways so uh it on my end i don't add any more pressure that's that's already that's already don't put on myself you know because every fight if it's not a finish i'm pretty disappointed with <laughs> with myself you know like i'd i want to get the finish every single time every single time so uh you know april 8th no different uh, you get past Rob, like what, like what do you kind of think would be next? As the top of the division is kind of booked up, like you obviously have Sterling Cejudo, mm -hmm. you have Sandhagen Vera, which is like what two weeks before your fight, and then obviously O'Malley is out there, like Marab. I I think O'Malley gets the winner. Who knows what happens to Marab? Like there are some options, but at the same time, like I feel like Marab, I say Sterling loses, wants that title shot. O'Malley wants a title shot. I imagine winner Sandhagen Vera wants a title shot. So all of a sudden, like. The top of the division seems like it could just be waiting for a title shot and like like yeah. where do you think that kind of puts you i feel like the top 10 has already been a log jam anyways like everybody's clawing and scratching to get to that get to that title they want to get a fight in and most of these guys are already booked up so it's kind of just kind of like a play wait and see if that makes mm -hmm. sense you know so uh you know i go out there start start to rob i take that sixth spot you know it just there's only like five other guys in front of me so it's usually kind of just looking at that fight where you just like kind of wait and see, see how the division plays out, see what, what fights get booked. And, you know, it's just kind of from there, just seeing who's next, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like I, as much as I want to go out there and like change, change my life, change my family's life, you know, I, I would love to get a fight with a uh, fight with O'Malley, but at the same time, you know, I, I'm hundred percent focused on Rob. So, uh, you know, if going out there and start them like because the, these rankings are pretty weird you know with like how how they go uh if i do take that sixth spot you know and realistically i could be one fight away but in my head like it's 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 if i don't get past font then i i shouldn't even be looking past like i shouldn't be you know i shouldn't be looking forward ahead of them because font's in front of me uh, so yeah, that's the way I'm looking at it right now. You know, Font can stop all all of that talk right now. So I want to go out there, finish them, and then see how everything plays out afterwards. Uh, are you someone too that like? I feel like with you, like you're a guy that doesn't really like sitting around. Like I think even if you beat Rob, like I feel like you'd still be a guy to take a fight, even if it's someone behind you slightly, just to kind of stay active and fight rather than just holding out and hoping the UFC picks you for that title shot. Yeah, uh, man. Also, I took a fight. <laughs> I took only one fight last year, and I, I've been kind of pretty much been, was on the phone uh, with my manager every single week. I'm pretty sure he got tired of hearing my voice, you know. So, so uh, I was I was on the phone with him, just trying to get a fight, try to book a fight. But you know, things weren't playing out the way that that they were supposed to. And you know, I was supposed to fight in November, but then things fell apart. A lot of things were kind of just in and out. Yeah, it was just it was a frustrating time. So yeah, I definitely would want to get another fight because I don't ever want to have another one fight year. And I want to have multiple fights in the year. Uh and I I'm it was a blessing and a curse to only fight once once last year, but for me, at the at the rate that I'm going right now, I I need to be fighting a little bit more. Uh because I don't want to be a reason why there's a there's a log jam here. I want to continue to fight.
Uh, just final thing, like you and O'Malley seem destined eventually to fight each other. Like I met, like, do you kind of agree with that? And then are you happy that fight didn't happen? What was it like two years ago when you guys were kind of calling each other out? Like, are you happy it didn't happen then? And now it kind of can be a fight for a belt or a number one contender. And it's obviously a much bigger fight now. Oh yeah. 100%. I feel like this fight's only going to get bigger. It's a, it's only marinated in, in all the great seasonings to make a big fight so for me i'm pretty excited i'm pretty excited for that just like because even even let's just say it like let's just say it like this if something were to happen in that henry cejudo uh aljermaine sterling fight i go out there i starch font i get that number six spot it's so easy like just so easy for for O'Malley to be like, all right, well, I want to stay active. You know, what's next? Who's out there? Depending on that Cheeto Vera, Corey Sanhagen fight, depending on how that fight goes, I might be next up. I mean, possibly could even be like, all right, Sean, you can you can call your shot. He can fight any one of us. And actually, you know, he's going to be like, all right, well, I fought Cheeto once before. He might want to get that get back. Or I'm coming off of a great win, 6-0 six, six and oh in the UFC. You know, there there could be like a possible chance for like, hey man, interim because I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to fight Marab whatsoever. Yeah. So, yeah, like, uh, so for me, it'd be easy just be like, all right, cool, we can do, we can definitely do that. There might be something, you know, let's just say Henry Cejudo and Aljamain both like after their fights, they're taking a year off because they got injured, they got hurt. You know, it pretty much the person who's kind of calling the shots at uh, 135 right now is pretty much O'Malley because he's the biggest star here. So, going out there might be. He might be like, hey, you know, let's see what about an interim title. And then UFC might like that idea and then be like, who do you think? And shit, I might get the golden digit and fight him and get get that shot. So that, that in a in a perfect scenario where everything kind of falls into those places, in my head, that's that would make this fight so much bigger, especially since we've been bickering back and forth. Like now he's not even bickering, he's just kind of just been calling each other out for for the last like year or two or something like that. So uh, it'd be fun. It'd be fun for that to happen, but I know the reality. It, it ain't gonna happen like that. But it, it'll, 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 it'll probably be like a number one contender fight, if anything. I actually think there is a scenario where no matter what happens in May, the belt's vacated after. Because I think if Cejudo wins, I could see him either just saying, "All right, I did it again. I'm done," or saying, "All right, I did it again. Now I'm going for 45 for the belt." And maybe he just holds it to try to become champ champ. Or maybe the UFC says, like, you got to vacate and we'll give you that 45 shot. And then Sterling has also said, like, he only has one or two more at 35 because then he wants Marab to get the shot. So I wouldn't be surprised if he beats Hudo and says, all right, I'm going up to 45. And then maybe they do you and O'Malley for a vacant title or something. That That's also very possible. Uh, but also at the same time, there's also, like, again, the the, the fight – uh, the San Antonio card, you got the yeah. Corey Sanhagen, Cheeto Vera. They might not put uh, Corey first. And if Vera wins, I think it's definitely yeah, if, Vera O'Malley. If Vera, if Vera wins, it's definitely that one. So if Vera wins, that puts a that puts a re- that puts a wrench in my plans. But <laughs> at the same time, it would be well deserved for someone like Vera because he's been out there just fucking grinding their, uh, day in and day out, fighting his ass off, not saying no to any fights. You know, so uh, for me, like I wouldn't. I will, again, like, of course, I want to go out there and fight, fight uh, for a belt or anything and all that stuff. But if there were to be like a Sean, you know, they just say everything plays out how you had just said, you know, Aljo goes up to 45 or so who to try to do that championship stuff. I'm pretty sure they would probably go over Marab and have Cheeto and uh, Sugar, Sugar too, if Sugar wins. Uh, no, if Cheeto wins, my bad. Uh- well, Adrian, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much for doing this again. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the thank you for the platform, man. Thank you so much. All right. We're joined by UFC Strawway Lupi Godinez, who's back in action at UFC 287. Lupi, how's it going? Really good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I obviously last fight didn't go your way, fought a ranked girl in Angela Hill. Like looking back now a couple months later, like what did you learn and kind of take away from that fight? Um what did I learn? I learned a lot, uh, but I, I didn't talk about this much because I just don't, you know, I don't like excuses like, oh, what do you go through, whatever. But after after my fight with uh, Carnalosis, I put something on my hip and I was out for a month and a half or two months around that. So when I started getting clear, <clears throat> I was going to get clear, then I get a fight for October, right? Mm-hmm. And 
my physio is like, oh yeah, you'll be ready for that. We just need, you know, and you know, just chill right now. Okay, perfect. Then as soon as I started training a little bit, I get the call to take the fight in two weeks, short notice fight. So I couldn't say no. I love fighting. I, you know, that's what I do. And um, you know, I'm. I was like, oh, I'm good. You know, it's okay. I'm good. And uh, yeah, and so I couldn't perform the way I would like to. I couldn't shoot properly. I couldn't move properly because I feel that, you know, that like tight, like the tightness or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, you know, do I regret it? No, you know, it's what it is. I did it and, you know, I, um, I, I almost, you know, I almost finished the fight in the first, in the first round and, it wasn't like I go beat up either. And she's been in this game for such a long time. And, you know, told me a lot, give me actually more confident. Like, okay, I wasn't 100%. I didn't train. And and, and it was a pretty go, a pretty uh, close fight. <laughs> I, I played her game, which was striking. And I didn't, you know, I didn't even go a black guy, I, I don't think. And then after that fight, like, was this about the time frame? Or were you hoping to return a lot sooner? Because you like fighting pretty active. Yeah, I wanted to return sooner, uh, but I guess the cars were busy. The, the the new the new fighters coming into the UFC, so of course it's hard to fit everyone in. Uh, but I think it was a good it was a good time. It was a good time for me to to get better, to just focus on 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 more technical stuff, adding more tools in my game. Um, and I think it was the right thing to do. I feel better than ever. I feel, you know, faster, stronger, more technical, even more aggressive. Like, um, I'm a lot more mature as a athlete than as a fighter. So, um, I'm really excited for this one. And then Cynthia Calvillo, did this surprise you just cause she obviously was, has been fighting at flyweight? Uh, it doesn't surprise me. You know, I... I, you know, I, I don't really thought too much about it. You want to fight Cynthia Calvillo? That's the name. Yes, of course. That's it. I don't think too much about it. Uh, I know she struggles to make 115. Um, I hope everything is going well for her and make it healthy into the cage and, and dance together. And then you find out you're on this big pay-per-view in Miami back in front of fans, like third straight fight in front of fans. Like how kind of exciting is that for you? Or you're kind of continuing the streak of being able to fight in front of fans. Yeah, it's exciting. You know, I'm, I feel so blessed. I'm lucky to, to have this opportunity and um, I'm excited to give the crowd what they want. A good show. Uh, what's it like for you to be a part of this card? Like, obviously, you have Adesanya Pereira's rematch. Like, you have Jorge Maz at all. Like, you have a lot of the big names on this card. Uh, it's amazing, you know. Uh, as I say, it's a big opportunity, a big, uh, you know, it's just, you know, when I when when they told me, like, when I knew who was going to fight and stuff, I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. You know, so stoked, so excited. <laughs> Uh, where has, I know you kind of bounce around training a bit, like where is kind of training been for this one? Here in Vancouver. Yeah. Back, uh, the whole time or have you gone out to Mexico a bit? Uh, I was about to leave to Mexico to go train there, but then I had to redo my visa to go to fighting. So the appointment, it just wouldn't work out. Yeah. You know, I was trying to do appointments in Mexico, but then what if my passport doesn't come soon enough? And then I had to come back to Canada. It was just like a little like that. Uh, but yeah, now we got that down, da done. So after this one, I'll probably go to Mexico. Uh, train. And then with Cynthia, like she's lost four in a row, but you look at the girls she's fought are some of the best at flyweights. Like wh how much like do you pay attention to those losses and kind of like, who, or is it more just like she's kind of only fought the best and like you, she still could be one of the best? Oh yeah, definitely. You know, she uh, she's been around for a long time. We we seen her fight. We we can we we know what she can do, and and she's a great fighter. You know, sometimes uh, you know fighters can go through like a bad like a bad wave wave or whatever. But that doesn't mean they're not a good fighters. You know, like as you say, he she's been fighting the best of the best, and um, is some it's tough it's tough out there. <laughs> And then 
you're obviously known for your wrestling, but even in your last fight, you showed off your strikings. Like, how do you think you match up against Cynthia here? Oh, I think we match amazing. Like, she's, uh, you know, I think this fight, uh, she, like, I'm going to be a lot more um, mixed, mixed mm -hmm. a, a little bit of everything. And uh, she's a perfect opponent to show get all my skills, you know, like put them all together and, and, and show what I have on the table. Even though you lost your last fight, like, did that help get a bit of confidence in your striking where you know, like, if you can't get someone down, like, you still can't hang with them on the feet? Yeah, well, my last fight, uh, like, that doesn't give me any confidence and that doesn't give me less confidence, you know. I know what I'm capable of. I know how I train. I know what I can do. So that's all that matters. Uh, how do you kind of see it playing out then? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I, it's just going to be dominating, dominating by me. That's how I see it. I just don't see it all the way, you know. It's just going to be me a step, um, a step for, like a step uh, ahead. And then you beat Cynthia. You say you're going to get a finish. Like, where do you think that puts you at straw weight? Because your last fight was obviously against Angela Hill, who's ranked. And, like, Cynthia's been a girl that's been ranked for a long time as well. Yeah, honestly, I have no idea, and I don't really care. All I care is about this fight and be the best that I can be for myself. And uh, whatever happens after, that's just what happens. Do you worry about her weight at all just because she's been at 25 four straight times? Like last time she did cut to 15, she missed weight. Like, do you worry about that at all? Um, I will fight her even if she steps in the scale and she's 150, 140, 130. I don't care. I will fight her regardless. Uh, I just want her to be healthy and to be the best in Jacalvillo that is, you know, for me to test my skills and just to, for me to be better and to get better. And you're someone that likes to be as active as possible. So, like, what is kind of the goal then for you this year? Yeah, I would like to fight another two, three times after this one if possible. But, um, you know, we don't we don't know with the UFC and, you know, I just go roll with the roll with the punches. Uh, yeah, I want to be active. Obviously, you know, I love fighting, uh, but it's up to them. And just final thing, like all signs kind of point to the UFC coming back to Canada this year. Like how kind of exciting would that be for you to be a part of that card if you can be on it? Oh, that will be amazing. You know, it will be uh, it will be pretty cool. Also, they may go to Mexico too, right? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I can be here. I can be there. I can't. That There's is your next two <laughs> fights booked. Huh? There's your next two fights, Canada and Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Lupi, I appreciate the time as always. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye -bye.